Greetings everybody, Chaplain Bob Walker here, Light of the World Ministries. In John 8, 12, Jesus said, I am the light of the world. He that followeth me shall not walk in darkness, but shall have the light of life. Yeah, there was a little while there, I kind of felt dry like a desert as far as doing Bible studies and uh, just didn't feel very motivated to do anything looking at the world situation, but now I kind of feel motivated. So this Bible study is going to be on pleasure. Now there's two types of pleasure. Obviously, earthly, sensual pleasure. And then there is the pleasure of the Lord. In the Lord and of the Lord. So let's take a look at Revelation chapter 4. Sometimes you have to look at the end to see the beginning. And sometimes you got to look at the beginning to see the end. If that makes sense. I hope it will. So, Revelation chapter 4. Get out your King James Bible. Verse 1. After this I looked, and behold, a door was opened in heaven. A door. Hmm. I did a Bible study on the door. Yeah. Uh, boy, we could do a whole study on just the door, huh? I know it'll seem redundant and foolish, but, you know, what is the purpose of a door? It's to allow you entry into something. In Genesis 6, Noah was told to build an ark. And, you know, the flood. So in Genesis 6, 16, it says, A window shalt thou make to the ark, and in a cubit shalt thou finish it above, and the door, and the door of the ark shalt thou set in the side thereof, with lower, second, and third stories shalt thou make it. So, you know, there's a door to the ark. And you either went into the ark and lived, or you went, you drowned. Yeah. Unless, of course, you could float for, uh, you know, 40 days and 40 nights, right? Be a little hard, but uh, yeah. In the book of Exodus, what about the first Passover? You took the blood of the lamb, and what did you do with the blood of the lamb? Uh, let's see. Oh, hey, here we go. Exodus 12, 7. Here's the answer. And they shall take of the blood and strike it on the two side posts and on the upper door, on the upper door post of the houses, wherein they shall eat it. So, and then in verse 23, uh, those that had the blood of the lamb on the door. For the Lord will pass, uh, yeah, Exodus 12, 23. For the Lord will pass through to smite the Egyptians, and when he seeth the blood upon the lintel and on the two side posts, the, door, uh, the Lord will pass over the door and will not suffer or allow and will not suffer the destroyer to come in unto your houses to smite you. Hmm. Okay. So if you were inside the door that had the blood, the angel of death, I think it's called, or the destroyer, would pass over. You know, it would just pass you by, skip over. But if you didn't, uh, somebody died in the house. Yeah. All right, let's go to John chapter 10, verse 1. King James Bible version. King James Version Bible, whatever. Yeah. 
Jesus speaking, words of Christ in red. Verily, verily, I say unto you, he that entereth not by the door, he that entereth not by the door into the sheepfold, and you, it's, you know, you, you got a door to keep the goats away from the sheep. There's a spiritual application there, people. You know, it's funny that uh, the Church of Satan has a goat for their symbol. But that's just a coincidence, right? He that entereth not by the door into the sheepfold, but climbeth up some other way, the same is a thief and a robber. Who wants to steal your joy in this life? Oh yeah, the accuser. But he that entereth in by the door is the shepherd of the sheep. Oh yeah. To him the porter openeth. Yeah, it's like a doorman. And the sheep hear his voice, and he calleth his own sheep by name, and leadeth them out. Isn't that wonderful? Christ, his sheep will hear his voice, and he calls his sheep by name. He knows your name. But the goats don't know his name. Now, his name is Yeshua. No, his name is Yahashua. Now his name is Yahu ha 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 Yeah. They don't even know his name. Let you know a little secret. The New Testament was written in Greek. Greek was the common language of the Middle East because Alexander the Great had conquered the Middle East. Cleopatra of Egypt was a Greek. Yeah. They don't tell you that in history class. Greek people. And his name is Jesus. And if they want to pray to Yahaha, Shaha, Shaha, well, fine. Fine and dandy. You know, but uh, I don't know. I If you want to use a, a, a name for the Lord that's in the Old and New Testament, well, Emmanuel, God with us. There you go. Or, when I first came to the Lord, I said, the God of Abraham, the God of Isaac, and the God of Jacob. Doesn't get any plainer and clearer than that. Absolutely. To him the porter openeth, and the sheep hear his voice. And he calleth his own sheep by name, and leadeth them out. And when he putteth forth his own sheep, he goeth before them, and the sheep follow him, for they know his voice. Christ goes before them. Yeah, he went to the he-, he went up to heaven, and the sheep will follow him. Well, one day Christ is going to come to the earth, and there the sheep are going to go up in the air and meet him in the air, and then come to earth. One day, I'm not sure I'll be alive to see it. But, uh, well, at least in this flesh, anyways. I don't know. But we'll find out. And when he put forth his own sheep, he goeth before them, and the sheep follow him, for they know his voice. And a stranger will they not follow, but will flee from him, for they know not the voice of strangers. This parable spake Jesus unto them, but they understood not what things they were which he spake unto them. Then said Jesus unto them again, Verily, verily, I say unto you, I say unto you, I am the door. Christ is the door. He's the cornerstone. He's the lamb slain from the foundation of the world. They don't even, some, these Hebrew roots heretics don't even know his name. I am the door of the sheep. All that ever came before me are thieves 
and robbers, but the sheep did not hear them. I am the door. By me, if any man enter in, he shall be saved and shall go in and out and find pasture. The thief cometh not but for to steal and to kill and to destroy. I am come that they might have life and that they might have it more abundantly. Eternal life. I am the good shepherd and the good shepherd giveth his life for the sheep. But he that is an hireling, oh, turn on TBN if you want to see the hirelings or the 700 Club. Pretty much any anybody on te famous on television for that matter. You know, there's a pastor that I respect, taught me most of what I know. He was actually paying for television time. And they got to the point where they would not even allow him on the television, paying for it. They pulled another dirty trick, too. When he was in uh, broadcasting, they turned down the power of the transmitter. Yeah. They turned it down from, I don't know, 100% down to like 2 or 3%. So if you were right outside the studio watching the television, yeah, you could watch him. But if you were a mile away, nothing. And this is a Christian television station. Yeah, they all work for the same devils, and they will get their reward one day. But he that is an hireling and not the shepherd whose own the sheep are not, seeth the wolf coming and leaveth the sheep. Oh yeah, they see the wolf coming, they leave the sheep and they flee. And the wolf catcheth them and scattereth the sheep. The hiring fleeth because he is an hireling, and careth not for the sheep. Oh yeah. When they start enforcing the Noahide laws, you better believe all these hirelings are going to flee. They're going to run. And we're not talking about an insect that bites you and sucks the blood. They're going to flee all right. 14. I am the good shepherd. And know my sheep, and am known of mine. As the Father knoweth me, even so know I the Father, and lay down my life for the sheep. And other sheep I have, which are not of this fold, them also I must bring, and they shall hear my voice, and there shall be one fold and one shepherd. There's not going to be a Jewish fold, and a Christian fold, and a Methodist fold, and a Baptist fold, and a Catholic fold, and an Orthodox fold. No, there's going to be one flock, period. Therefore doth my Father love me, because I lay down my life, that I might take it again. No man taketh it from me, but I lay it down of myself. I have power to lay it down, and I have power to take it again. This commandment have I received of my Father. Wow. Mm. I think we'll go back to Revelation. Yeah, let's go back to Revelation chapter 4, verse 1. After this I looked, and behold, a door was opened in heaven. A door. Yeah, we know who the door is. And the first voice which I heard was, as it were, of a trumpet talking with me, which said, Come up hither, and I will show thee things which must be hereafter. And immediately I was in the Spirit, behold, a throne was set in heaven, 
and one sat on the throne. And he that sat was to look upon like a jasper and a sardine stone, and there was a rainbow round about the throne in sight like unto an emerald. A rainbow. Huh, isn't it funny that there's a certain group that does what the Bible calls an abomination and they love to use a rainbow as their symbol. Yeah, anything to mock the Lord, anything and everything. Well, one day they're not going to be so brave with their pride, but uh, not today. Verse 4, Revelation 4.4, 4. And round about the throne were four and twenty seats. And upon the seats I saw four and twenty elders sitting. Twenty-four elders sitting, clothed in white raiment, white clothing. And they had on their heads crowns of gold. Now, I did a Bible study on this, the four and twenty elders. Who are they? Well, if you look at the New Jerusalem coming down from heaven you got 12 foundations which are the 12 apostles I don't think it's Matthias I think he, Matthias was probably a great guy but I think it's Paul you got 11 apostles minus Judas is 11 well 12 minus Judas is 11 yeah Two years of college, I can I can do math, right? Even though it's a public, it was a public school in Florida, Flora, duh. Uh, yeah, twelve apostles minus Judas equals eleven, plus Paul, twelve. They were the foundation of the New Jerusalem. Jesus is the cornerstone. And the twelve gates, the twelve doors, are the twelve tribes of the children of Israel. Wouldn't they be the four and twenty elders? I think so. Can I prove it? Yeah. One day we'll find out. Verse 5. And out of the throne proceedeth, proceeded lightnings and thunderings and voices. Hmm. Lightnings, thunderings, and voices. Yeah. And, uh, you know, the uh, evil ones always corrupt what the Bible is all about. Out of the throne of God comes thunderings and lightnings. But what do they say is in control of thundering and lightning? Well, if you look at Thor, Thor was the Norse god of thunder. Why Marvel, uh, the Marvel Comics group, partnered with, uh, made a movie or two or three or whatever. And uh, yeah, yeah, god of thunder, hey. But in Greek mythology, you had Zeus, the god of the sky of ancient Greek mythology. So, uh, <laughs> the lightning bolt. Yeah, Zeus could throw lightning bolts and, you know. But, uh, and then they'll tell you that Jesus is really Zeus. It's G Zeus. Uh, yeah, well, I don't listen to, I don't listen to devils when they're talking. You know, but, uh, yeah, what can I tell you? In the book of Luke, chapter 10 and verse 18, And he, Jesus, said unto them, I beheld Satan as lightning fall from heaven. Mm. Yeah, they just love to mock us, don't they? All right, Revelation 4 and verse 5. And out of the throne proceeded lightnings and thunderings and voices, and there were seven lamps of fire burning before the throne, 
which are the seven spirits of God. And before their throne there was a sea of glass like unto crystal. And in the midst of the throne and round about the throne were four beasts full of eyes before and behind. And the first beast was like a lion, and the second beast like a calf, and the third beast had a face as a man, and the fourth beast was like a flying eagle. And the four beasts had each of them six wings about him, and they were full of eyes within, and they rest not day and night, saying, Holy, 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 Lord God Almighty, which was past and is present and is to come, future for eternity. Now, why are they saying holy, holy, holy? Why, why are they repeating this three times? Ah, good question. I'm glad you asked. Real simple. Father, Son, Holy Spirit. Oh, you're one of those Trinity people. Oh, you're terrible. You believe in a three-headed God or a three-faced God. Well, that's if you believe the Jehovah's Witnesses or the oneness so-called Pentecostals. But the Bible clearly teaches that man has a body, a soul, and a spirit. And they're not the same. And we were created in God's image. Three parts makes one person. I'm not three people, but I have a body, a soul, and a spirit. And so do you. Until one day you die, and then you'll just be a soul and a spirit. Your body will be dust. You know, when Adam sinned, God said, For out of dust I've taken you, and returned to dust thou shalt, or whatever. I'm paraphrasing. So when he died, he returned to the earth from whence he came. Holy, 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 Father, Son, Holy Spirit. Each has their own attributes and purpose. And Christ was subject to the Father. And the Holy Spirit was subject to Christ. Christ even says, I will send you the Comforter, which is the Spirit of Truth. Yeah, but that's another study. I got a whole playlist on that, if you're interested. On YouTube, for as long as they're around. So, holy, holy, holy Lord God Almighty, which was, and is, and is to come. And when those beasts give glory and honor and thanks to him that sat on the throne, who liveth forever and ever, Forever and ever. That's a long time, people. The four and twenty elders fall down before him that sat on the throne and worship him that liveth forever and ever and cast their crowns before the throne, saying, Ah, here's the punchline. Listen carefully. Thou art worthy, O Lord, to receive glory and honor and power. See, the Lord is worthy to receive glory, honor, and power. For thou hast created all things, for thou hast created all things, and for thy pleasure, whose pleasure? The Lord's pleasure. And for thy pleasure they are and were created. Yes. The Lord is worthy to receive glory and honor and power. Created all things for his pleasure. All things. Yes. Think about that. So, whose pleasure should we be trying to fulfill? Our own? Or should we do things that gives the Lord pleasure to enjoy our existence, to give him glory and honor and, and 
recognize his power. I mean, we, I, I don't know about you, but I don't have any glory or honor to give him. All I can do is recognize his glory and honor and power. That's all I can do. If I had any, I could give it to him, but I don't have any. The only righteousness any of us would ever have is Christ. That's it. But, uh, hey, what can I tell you? Now, I have a Bible study on, did God create evil? There is a, actually a verse in the Bible that says the Lord created evil. Of course, God created Satan good originally until he sinned and was found evil. Technically, God created Satan who became evil. So you could basically argue and say, well, you know, the Bible says, yeah, God created evil. Think about it. Satan was a, an anointed cherub that covered, the, I think, the throne of God. I think he was one of the angels depicted on the mercy seat. And then he decided he wanted, um, he wanted to be the top dog and, you know, but uh, that position was not available. And, uh, yeah. But if you read in Romans 9.22, it says, What if God, willing to show his wrath and to make his power known, endured with much long-suffering the vessels of wrath Vessels of wrath fitted to destruction. Vessels of wrath fitted to destruction? Oof. That's some strong language there. Oh, yeah. You know, people, I'm not going to say we're in the end times, but... Every day is a day closer to the end times. And there's a lot of stuff going on. A lot of stuff. There's stuff I can't even talk to you about. Um, because it would get deleted. I would get deleted. My channel would get deleted. But their takeover of virtually everything's complete. And if you think uh, that guy over in um, that has rulership over Siberia is uh, on our side, uh, don't be fooled. It's like it's like a, a wrestling match. I knew a guy that was a professional wrestler. His manager ran off with all his money. I don't know what uh, group the manager was part of, but take a guess they always control entertainment but uh this guy was a professional wrestler and he was always joking about it says yeah you know we me and the guy i was supposed to wrestle in the arena or the ring or whatever uh we'd be in the back playing checkers or whatever and uh and then we would get out in front of the crowd and I'm going to kick your rear. No, I'm going to kick your rear. Oh, I'm number one. You're, you know, I'm better than you. And uh, it's all for show. He says, you made darn sure you didn't hurt these guys, you know, because, hey, you know, they're just trying to make a living like you are. And then they were told, okay, this match you're going to win, that match you're going to lose. And, you know, and then you're the champion and now you've got to do a rematch and, you know. It was all for show. Well, that's what this, all this stuff going on is all a show. It's a diversion to take your mind off what's really going on. But we're entering a time, these fuel prices are going to really hurt people. I mean, you got to realize something. A truck driver wrote me last night, and uh, I drove a truck for five years, about.
probably half a million miles driven. He wrote me last night and said his fuel cost, now he's leasing, leasing a truck from a company. And they were, they have a contract to get paid a certain amount of money. Well, the fuel costs went up. He told me that his fuel costs was more than what he was making. He said he drove over 2,000 miles for a week or whatever. And the company says he owes them money. I think he said like $33. Isn't it funny? 33. They love that number, right? I mean, well, I'm going to pay you to work for you? Really? Really, dude? I'm going to pay you to work for you. Now, it's is it the company's fault? No. But personally, I think this, um, the fuel, rise in fuel costs has nothing to do with the guy that's in charge of Siberia. No, absolutely no. That's just the excuse they're using. I think they're doing it for the freedom, uh, you know, the guys that are in the convoy of the trucks uh, to hurt them. That's what I think. But my point is, these high fuel costs are going to affect transportation and everything. You know, a lot of the stuff comes by truck. The things that you buy, and they're going to just pass these costs on to you. So, you know, if you're used to something costing a dollar, well, add the fuel cost to it. It's not just hurting you at the pump. Oh, and this truck driver told me 190 gallons was over a thousand bucks out west. Uh, maybe California, I'm not sure. I mean, can you imagine that? To fill up your truck a thou over a thousand dollars? You think those trucks only get like seven, eight miles a gallon? And that's if they're not heavy. Think about it. Every Every nine miles, you're throwing five dollars out the window. Really? Yeah, they're gonna go broke quick. Things are heating up, people. Uh, they got control of the fu the fuel. They got control of the money. They got control of the food. They got control of everything. And yet. Job, in chapter 5 and verse 22, has a word to give us. So let's take a look. Job 5.22 At destruction and famine thou shalt laugh. Neither shalt thou be afraid of the beasts of the earth. This is God's people. This is God's people. Now, some of us are going to probably, when they enforce the Noahide laws, some of us are going to literally lose your heads. Matthew 24, Mark 13. Look it up. I'm not making this stuff up. But for others, at destruction and famine thou shalt laugh. Neither shalt thou be afraid of the beasts of the earth. Sometimes there's a two-legged beast. So, keep that in mind. Now, I don't know if you have probably heard this me say this a few times. Every king, Christ and the Father, every king has a kingdom, and every kingdom has laws. Yeah. In Ecclesiastes 12 and 13, I believe it was Solomon, who was supposed to be the wisest man that ever lived. He writes, I believe this was Solomon. Let us hear the conclusion of the whole matter. Fear God and keep his commandments. 
Fear God and keep his commandments, for this is the whole duty of man. Our duty is to keep the commandments and to fear the Lord. Well, guess what? In 1 John 4.18, there is no fear in love, but perfect love casteth out fear, because fear hath torment. He that feareth is not made perfect in love. Hmm. In the book of John 14.15, Jesus said, If ye love me, Keep my commandments. Now, is he talking about the Ten Commandments? Well, eh, maybe. But I think it's the Two Commandments. In Matthew chapter 22. All right, Matthew 22 and verse 35. Boy, I've, I've beat this one. A number of times but I'm gonna beat it again then one of them which was a lawyer and yeah, not a modern-day lawyer this is a doctor of the law God's law not the uh, fake law that we got running around today then one of them which was a lawyer asked him Jesus a question tempting him and saying so he's trying to trip Jesus up Boy, I tell you what uh, trying to ask Jesus a trick question, you're going to make yourself look like a fool every time. So he asked him a question, tempting him and saying, Master, which is the great commandment in the law? Good question. But he's trying to trick him, tempting him. Jesus said unto him, Thou shalt love the Lord thy God with all thy heart. Ah, perfect love casts out fear, right? There you go. Perfect love casts out fear. Thou shalt love the Lord thy God with all thy heart, and with all thy soul, and with all thy mind. This is the first and great commandment. Love the Lord. Boy, that's... You know, there's people that actually tell you that this is a work. Yeah. Yeah, keeping the commandments is a work. Yeah, and you're trying to earn your salvation. They call it lordship salvation. Yeah, they'll tell you that you could be a hitman for the mafia, and as long as you love, you know, uh, believe in Jesus, you're saved. Ugh. Well, God has a place for people, and we'll we'll see it one day. We'll see who's right and who's wrong one day. Love the Lord thy God with all thy heart, with all thy soul, and with all thy mind. This is the first and great commandment. And the second is like unto it. Thou shalt love thy neighbor as thyself. And remember, God's people were to be separated and segregated. You're not supposed to be living in the multicultural thing that today that they have. No. God did not make a mistake when he put different groups of people in different areas of the world. God did not make a mistake. No. He knew what he was doing. Diversity is only for Christian, formerly Christian countries. Thou shalt love thy neighbor as thyself. On these two commandments hang all the law and the prophets. Yeah, there you go. All the law and the prophets. In the book of First Chronicles, chapter 29, verse 15, we read, For we are strangers before thee. Now, this is Israel speaking to the Lord. For we are strangers before thee, and sojourners, as were all our fathers. Our days on the earth are as a shadow, and there is none abiding. O Lord our God, all this store that we have prepared to build thee an house for thine holy name cometh of thine hand, 
and is all thine own. This is the uh, dedication of the, the first temple. I know also, my God, that thou triest the heart. God tests the heart. That thou triest the heart and hast pleasure in uprightness. God has pleasure in uprightness. God has no pleasure in wickedness. I think that's pretty obvious, right? As for me, in the uprightness of mine heart, I have willingly offered all these things, and now have I seen with joy thy people, which are present here, to offer willingly unto thee, O Lord God of Abraham, Isaac, and of Israel, our fathers, keep this forever in the imagination of the thoughts of the heart of thy people, and prepare their heart unto thee. God has pleasure in our loving him as he loved us, and he first loved us. All right, let's go back to 1 John chapter 4, verse 17. Herein is our love made perfect, that we may have boldness in the day of judgment. Why? Why can you have boldness in the day of judgment? Because as he is, Christ, so are we in this world. See, our faith in Christ makes us perfect like he is, or was and is, and always shall be. We're supposed to have boldness in the day of judgment. When David got was was looking at Goliath before he took his sling and decided to go fight him. He had boldness. He knew that God wanted Israel to have the land. He knew it. He says, who is this uncircumcised Philistine? How dare he defy the armies of the living God? I'm paraphrasing, but yeah. He knew God's promises. He believed God's promises. In Romans 4.3, we read, For what saith the scripture? Abraham believed God, and it was counted unto him for righteousness. Abraham believed God. Abraham was called the friend of God. David knew God. God's promises, and David believed. David was called a man after God's own heart. Yeah, he screwed up. And boy, have I done the same thing. 1 John chapter 4, 17, Herein is our love made perfect, that we may have boldness in the day of judgment. Because as he is, so are we in this world. There is no fear in love, but perfect love casteth out fear, because fear hath torment. He that feareth is not made perfect in love. We love him. We love him because he first loved us. Remember, Christ said, My sheep hear my voice. We love him because he first loved us. If a man say, I love God, and hateth his brother, he is a liar. For he that loveth not his brother whom he hath seen, how can he love God whom he hath not seen? Good question. Really good question. See, this whole world was made for God's pleasure. Even the wicked for the day of destruction. Yeah. And if we don't give God pleasure, what good are we? You know, I knew a guy that got a dog from the pound, I think. He got a dog. It was a big dog. I mean, a big, strong dog. I, you know, I don't, I don't know if it was a Great Dane, but it was a, you know, good-sized dog. 
probably around 90, 100 pounds. And he brought the dog home, introduced it to the family, and, you know. But the dog decided he wanted to be the alpha of the house. He was going to be in charge. Yeah, I'm going to be the top dog. I'm going to be the alpha. Well, he decided, the dog decided he didn't want to go outside for no reason at all. Under no circumstances do I want to go outside. Well, the dog decided, hey, I need to take a dump. So he decided to go to the bathroom in the house. And they tried to tell the dog, no, 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 no. That, that's not how it works. You got to go outside. Dog was having none of it. Well, one night, day, the, the father of the house is, sees the dog doing, you know, getting ready to squat and do a number two on the, in the house. So he grabs the dog by the collar and tries to take him to the door to take him out. Well, the dog is like, uh, nope, I'm going to do it right here. And he tried to bite the father. I mean, you know... <laughs> trying to bite the father of the house. I mean, I, I go to work every day to, to, to pay for this house and pay for this dog's food. And, y you know, really? This dog's going to try to bite me? So he grabs the dog by the collar and, and the dog's trying to bite him. And, he you know, he yells at the wife, open the door, open the door. Well, guess what? He dr drags the dog out, out the door and throws him out the door and slams the door shut. And guess what? He said, I'm not putting up with this crap. Calls the animal control, the pound, whatever you want to call it. Come and get this dog. I don't want it. Yeah. Dogs are going to try to bite me? I don't think so. Well, guess what, people? Is there a spiritual application here? Are we in God's house? Are we basically, uh, I guess you could say, taking a dump on his, in his house? The dog brought no pleasure to the family. And those that don't honor the Lord and, and don't bring him pleasure, well, they're going to be thrown out. Just like Satan was thrown out. Think about it. Spiritual application. It's here. Yeah. And, and, and you got to look at us the same way. This is God's world. He created us. He created us. He created everything. Are we going to mess up his world and think that there will be no consequences? God is holy and righteous. And if we don't bring him pleasure, what good are we? None. Zero. So, you know, something to think about. You know, when you read Ezra chapter 9 and Ezra chapter 10, the people had disobeyed the Lord and made marriages with the people of the land. You know, the ones that Lord said, stay away from them. Don't marry them. Don't give your sons to their daughters. Don't give your daughters to their sons. Be ye separate. Be ye separate and be ye holy for I am holy. Let's see if I can find that real quick. In 1 Peter 1.16, because it is written, be ye holy for I am holy. The Lord is holy. He's telling us to live holy lives. In Ezra chapter 9, verse 2, we read, For they have taken of their daughters for themselves and for their sons, so that the holy seed, so that the holy seed, now if there's a holy seed, there's got to be an unholy seed, so that the Holy Seed have mingled themselves with the people of those lands 
Yea, the hand of the princes and rulers have been chief in this trespass. What does it mean to be trust, a trespass? Well, if you're trespassing, it means you're in a place where you shouldn't be. You don't belong there. You know, in Matthew 7, 6, Jesus speaking, Give not that which is holy unto the dogs. But, but Chaplain Bob, you don't understand. God said to, to, to preach to every creature. Uh, Jesus said not to give that which is holy unto the dogs. Is he talking about four-legged animals with a tail that wags when you come home? Uh, no. If you look up the word dogs in the Old Testament, and I'm afraid to even say the word, you're talking about people that like to have pride parades with a, a rainbow flag, if you catch my drift, are referred to as dogs yeah let me look at let me look it up so you can you can look it up on your own and see well chaplain bob's lying he's pulling verses out of context uh i don't think so now what i'm going to read is called parallelism deuteronomy 23 verse 17 there shall be no whore of the daughters of Israel oh boy I tell you what you go to the average high school I you know back when I was in the 70s going to high school you know out of a hundred girls I doubt if three were virgins I seriously doubt it I, I don't know maybe five of course I wasn't doing an inspections but uh all the girls I knew uh, Never mind. There shall be no whore of the daughters of Israel, nor a so dumb it of the sons of Israel. Yeah, read that word on your own. Verse 18. Thou shalt not bring the hire of a whore or the price of a dog parallelism here people tells you what a dog is it's the previous verse thou shalt not bring the hire of a whore or the price of a dog into the house of the lord thy god for any vow for even both of these are abomination unto the lord thy god yeah Matthew 7, 6. Give not that which is holy unto the dogs, neither cast ye your pearls before swine, lest they trample them under their feet and turn again and rend you. You ever seen a, a wild hog? They got tusk, teeth. They'll rip you to shreds. Any of you remember Disney's movie Old Yeller? Well, I never really watched that movie, but I know what happened. Somebody climbed a tree and Old Yeller got ripped to pieces and died. Yeah. The hogs, the swine will rip you to pieces. Don't cast your pearls before swine. There's a reason why Jesus spoke to them in parables. In Matthew 13, verse 10, you know, Jesus was always speaking in parables with the crowds, the multitude. And the disciples came and said unto him, Why speakest thou unto them in parables? Jesus, why do you talk to them in parables? He answered and said unto them, Because it is given unto you, it is given unto you to know the mysteries of the kingdom of heaven, but to them it is not given. Ah, 
Jesus spoke in parables to hide the gospel of the kingdom from the swine and the dogs. Some people just follow Jesus to watch the magic show. Others for the bread and the fish so they could fill their bellies. Not because they cared about the words of Christ. In John chapter 6, verse 25, And when they had found him on the other side of the sea, they said unto him, Rabbi, when camest thou hither? You know, when did you come here? 26. Jesus answered them and said, Verily, verily, I say unto you, Ye seek me, you know, you look for me, not because ye saw the miracles, but because ye did eat of the loaves and were filled. You're following me for the food to fill your belly. Not because you want to see the things of God or hear the things of God. 27. Labor, labor not for the meat which perisheth, but for the meat which endureth unto everlasting life. For the Son of Man shall give unto you, for him hath God the Father sealed. Oh, yeah. So what do they say? Then said they unto him, the multitude talking to Jesus, What shall we do that we might work the works of God? Jesus answered and said unto them, This is the work of God, that ye believe on him whom he hath sent. Believe on Christ whom God the Father hath sent. Oh yeah. Is that so hard? Is that so hard? In Psalms chapter 5 and verse 4, For thou art not a God that hath pleasure in wickedness. God doesn't have pleasure in wickedness. Neither shall evil dwell with thee. What happened when Satan tried to kill God in the war in heaven? He was cast down to the earth. God's not going to allow evil to dwell with him. Right now he's tolerating it on this earth. He's allowing it to bloom. Because the church ceased being salt. And I did a Bible study on that too. In Matthew 5.13, Jesus says, Ye are the salt of the earth. You know, salt will is used for a lot of things, not just is it an essential compound for your body, but it also, salt will kill bacteria that causes spoilage. You could put salt on, have you ever heard of salted meat? Yeah. You could dry meat with salt, dried meat with salt, and it'll keep for a while without refrigeration. Salt holds back corruption. Salt was so valuable in the days of Rome that they often paid their people with salt. That's where the expression comes from. Oh, he's not worth his salt. You know, he doesn't do enough. His work is no good. Jesus said, ye are the salt of the earth. But if the salt have lost his savor, Wherewith shall it be salted? It is thenceforth good for nothing but to be cast out and to be trodden under foot of men. When the church ceased to be the salt of the earth and lost its flavor, it's good for nothing. It's going to be cast out and it's going to be trampled on by the under the foot of man. Yeah. Think about it. The church has is no longer the salt of the earth. That's why we're in the mess we are in today. They tolerate every form of evil.
Psalms 103, 21. 103, verse 21. Bless ye the Lord, all ye his hosts, ye ministers of his, that do his pleasure. Hmm. Yeah. Psalms 147, verse 11. The Lord taketh pleasure in them that fear him, in those that hope in his mercy. See, the only mercy you're going to have is in Christ. That's it. Psalms 149, verse 4. For the Lord taketh pleasure in his people. He will beautify the meek with salvation. You know that Moses was called meek? Seek with, Moses was given great responsibility. But he was very meek. And a lot of people will mistake meekness with weakness m e e k with being weak the opposite of strong w e a k so big difference big difference all right let's go to the book of ezekiel we're going to look at uh, Ezekiel 18, 23, and then 18, 32. The Lord says, Have I any pleasure at all that the wicked should die, saith the Lord God, and not that he should return from his ways and live? For I have no pleasure in the death of him that dieth, saith the Lord God. Wherefore, turn yourselves and live ye. Ezekiel 33, 11. Say unto them, As I live, saith the Lord God, I have no pleasure in the death of the wicked, but that the wicked turn from his way and live. Turn ye, turn ye from your evil ways, for why will ye die? O house of Israel. And that's what the Bible's to, for, and about, is Israel. There are those that'll tell you, oh, it's about the whole world. Uh, no. That's why they ignore the book of Genesis. Because the book of Genesis is where all God's covenants are with Abraham, Isaac, Jacob, and uh, Adam and Seth and Noah and you know all these covenants. God didn't make a covenant with the whole world. Contrary to popular universalist preaching in all the pulpits, God told His people to be separate and segregated, and the world says nope. We got to be all mixed together. So, yeah. All right, let's go to Luke chapter 12. Uh, you know, sometimes I want to make a point and I think, well, I'm just going to read this small part. But, you know, the whole chapter is, is there anything in the Bible that doesn't belong there? Uh, I don't know. I don't think so. I think everything's in there for a reason. Even the book of Esther, which is probably my least favorite book. I read it once and probably will never read it again. But Luke chapter 12, verse 1, King James Version. In the meantime, when they were gathered together, an innumerable multitude, multitude of people, insomuch they trod one upon another, you know, they were climbing on each other. They were packed in like 
sardines. Or like Dolly Parton used to talk about her top saying, you know, trying to put 10 pounds of potatoes in a five pound bag. It just, you know, maybe that was a poor example, but yeah. He began to say unto his disciples, first of all, Beware ye of the leaven of the Pharisees, which is hypocrisy. The leaven of the Pharisees, hypocrisy. For there is nothing covered that shall not be revealed, neither hid that shall not be known. And there's people today that love the leaven of the Pharisees. They love it. They think, oh yeah, the leaven of the Pharisees. Why, that's, you know, God's people. Jesus had other things to say, but, you know. Verse 3, Therefore, whatsoever ye have spoken in darkness shall be heard in the light. You think you're in a corner, dark alley, speaking in secret into somebody's ears, whispering? Yeah. And that which ye have spoken in the ear and closets shall be proclaimed upon the housetops. Boy, I'll tell you what. Yeah. All of us. Me too. And I say unto you, my friends, be not afraid of them that kill the body. Yeah, Matthew 24, it says some of us are going to be taken to the councils and the sin of gogs to die as a witness to christ some of us will have this happen jesus said think not of what you will say aforetime matter of fact let's take a look at that real quick all right mark 13 uh, Jesus came from the temple and they asked him, uh, hey, uh, what, what is, what's it going to be like at the end of the world? You know? Uh, so let's take a look. 13 verse 1, And as he, Christ, went out from the temple, one of his disciples saith unto him, Master, see what manner of stones and what buildings are here. Hey, Jesus, did you see this great building and these stones? Look at this magnificent structure here. And Jesus answering said unto him, Seest thou these great buildings? There shall not be left one stone upon another that shall not be thrown down. Well, guess what? Every time you see a politician at the wailing wall, and then the certain group tells you that that's part of the temple, they're calling Jesus a liar. Jesus said there wouldn't be one stone left upon another that would not be thrown down. And that was fulfilled in 70 AD. Why? Well, the temple was set on fire and the temple was full of gold and the gold melted and went into between the cracks of all the rocks. And the soldiers, after they had slaughtered everybody, took every stone and scraped every tidbit of gold from it and threw it down. Yeah. Every stone was thrown down one upon another just like Jesus warned, well, foretold. Every single one. So when you see the politicians at the Wailing Wall just remember, they're calling Jesus a liar. That was not the temple. Most people say it was the uh, a Roman fort. They're praying at a Roman fort. <laughs> Verse 3. And as he sat upon the Mount of Olives over against the temple, Peter and James and John and Andrew asked him privately, Tell us, when shall these things be? And what shall be the sign when all these things shall be fulfilled? Uh, what's it going to be like, you know, the end of the world, Lord? And Jesus answering them began to say, Take heed lest any man deceive you. 
Hmm, be careful. People are going to try to deceive you. For many shall come in my name, saying, I am Christ, and shall deceive many. And when ye shall hear of wars and rumors of wars, be ye not troubled, for such things must needs be, but the end shall not be yet. For nation shall rise against nation, and kingdom against kingdom. Oh yeah. World War I, World War II. And there shall be earthquakes in divers places. Guess what? Uh, if you look up the U.S. Geological Survey, they record earthquakes. I've heard there's been a, a, a significant earthquake uh, occurrence in the world for over the last few years. Of course, they... Uh, you know, they've only started keeping records recently, but but there's an increase. And there shall be famines. You know, if the Lord tells you there's going to be famines, be smart to pay attention, wouldn't it? Yeah. Yeah, wouldn't it be smart to pay attention? I mean, when Joseph was in Egypt, Pharaoh had a dream. And Joseph interpreted that dream. He said, yeah, there's going to be seven years of plenty and seven years of famine. And Pharaoh believed uh, Joseph's interpretation and made Joseph the what, second or third ruler in the kingdom and said, store up the, uh, the plenty for the days of the famine. Yeah, the Lord tells you these things for a reason. Tell that to the pre-trib rapture crowd. Oh, we don't have to worry about that. We're going to fly away. We're going to fly away. We We're not going to be here. Uh, yeah, wait until they call Jesus a liar. Oh, Jesus was a false prophet and a liar. False Messiah. False Christ. He told us we wouldn't be here and we're still here. Well, Jesus didn't lie to you. Your pastors lied to you. And there shall be famines and troubles. These are the beginnings of sorrows. Oh, this is just the introduction, people. War, famine, trouble. Oh, yeah. This is just the introduction. Verse 9, but take heed to yourselves, for they shall deliver you up to councils, and in the synagogues ye shall be beaten. Oh, God would never let that happen to us. We're the bride of Christ, and, and God's not a, a wife beater. Well, they're calling Jesus a liar. I have no use for pre-trib rapture preachers. You know, every single one of them are going to be, um, how would you say, false prophets. And God has a problem with false prophets. For they shall deliver you up to councils, and in the synagogues ye shall be beaten. And ye shall be brought before rulers and kings for my sake, for a testimony against them. And the gospel must first be published among all nations. But when, ye, but when they shall lead you and deliver you up, take no thought beforehand what ye shall speak. Don't think, when they, when they, if you are of the ones that are called to die for your faith, like millions have before you, don't think about what you're going to say. When you're brought before them, keep your mind blank. The Lord will give you what you should say. Take no thought beforehand what ye shall speak, neither do ye premeditate. But whatsoever shall be given you in that hour, that speak ye. For it is not ye that speak, but the Holy Ghost. You know, this is a very, very important point. When the Lord speaks through you, the Holy Spirit, you will know in that instant you're saved. You will know. Hey, where did that come from out of my mouth? 
I didn't, did I say that? No, it was the Lord, the Holy Spirit. Oh, yeah. Don't think about what you're going to say. Don't fear those that kill the body. Now the brother shall betray the brother to death and the father of the son and children shall rise up against their parents and shall cause them to be put to death. Why? Well, uh, from elementary, uh, from, from kindergarten through elementary school, middle school, junior high, whatever, high school, on to college, university, you were taught, ooh, evolution. There is no God. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, you're just an old religious fool. A religious fanatic. Don't you know this is the true Messiah that came? Oh, yeah. Not that that guy from 2,000 years ago, more or less. Why are the children going to rise up against their parents and cause them to be put to death? CRT and... LBGT and all that other garbage, right? Verse 13. And ye shall be hated of all men for my name's sake. Even the Hebrew roots people hate the name Jesus. They hate the name Jesus. They hate it. There's a reason. And ye shall be hated of all men for my name's sake. But he that shall endure unto the end, the same shall be saved. When they put your head in the guillotine, you got to, just before the blade comes down, you're like, uh, wait a minute, wait a minute, wait, wait a minute. I, I changed my mind. Are you going to deny Christ? Some of us will have that opportunity. People just, they don't get it. All right, let's go back to the book of Luke, chapter 12, verse 4. Jesus speaking. And I say unto you, my friends, be not afraid of them that kill the body. Be not afraid of them that kill the body, but after that have no more that they can do. Yeah, they can take your body. They can't take your spirit and soul. They can't do any more. But I will forewarn you whom ye shall fear. Fear him after he hath killed, hath power to cast into hell. Yea, I say unto you, fear him. And remember, perfect love casts out fear, right? Are not five sparrows sold for two farthings? And not one of them is forgotten before God. But even the very heads... I'm sorry, but even the very hair, hairs on your head are all numbered. And for those of you that are bald, don't worry. For even the very hairs of your head are all numbered. Fear not, therefore, ye are of more value than many sparrows. Also, I say unto you, whosoever shall confess me before men. Him shall the Son of Man also confess before the angels of God. You know, one day, some of us are going to be brought before councils. But he that denieth me before men shall be denied before the angels of God. The scariest words you'd probably ever hear in your life is Christ saying, Depart from me, ye that work iniquity, I never knew you. I'm probably, I'm paraphrasing, but yeah, you get the idea, right? And wo and who whosoever shall speak a word against the Son of Man, it shall be forgiven him. But unto him that blasphemeth against the Holy Ghost, it shall not be forgiven. And uh, the blasphemy of the Holy Spirit is attributing the miracles of Christ to the devil, to the fallen angels, to the, the demons. And when they shall bring you unto the synagogues 
and unto magistrates and powers, take ye no thought how or what ye shall answer, or what ye shall say. For the Holy Ghost shall teach you in that same hour what ye ought to say. There you go. Second witness, right? And one of the company said unto him, Master, speak to my brother that he divide the inheritance with me. And he, Jesus, said unto him, Man, who made me a judge or a divider over you? And he said unto them, Take heed and beware of covetousness. For a man's life consisteth not in the abundance of the things which he possesseth. You know, the things that you possess, you know, gold, silver, whatever. Tell that to uh, certain people of this world, like Gates. Yeah, you know, Kill Bill. And he spake a parable unto them, saying, The ground of a certain rich man brought forth plentifully. And he thought within himself, saying, What shall I do, because I have no room where to bestow, bestow my fruits? So this guy's got, you know, a warehouse full of food, and he's got more, and he doesn't even know what to do with it all. Because I have no room where to bestow my fruits. And he said, this will I do. I will pull down my barns and build greater. And there will I bestow all my fruits and my goods. So not only do I have a barn full of food, I got more stuff than I know where to, what to do with. So I'm going to tear down the barn and make it bigger. And I will say to my soul, Soul, thou hast much good late goods laid up for many years. Take thine ease, eat, drink, and be merry. Yeah, take it easy, eat, drink, and be merry. But God said unto him, Thou fool, this night thy soul shall be required of thee. Then whose shall those things be which thou hast provided did he give to the poor no he didn't do nothing no he he wanted to build a warehouse full of stuff and when you die what are you going to do i've never seen a funeral where a, a hearse and a casket had a trailer so you could take the stuff to you wherever you're going. Chances down, 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 chances are downstairs, yeah. He had a warehouse full of stuff, and instead of giving the harvest to the poor, he says, oh, I'm going to store it away. And I'm going to take it easy and eat, drink, and be merry. And the Lord says, oh, I have no pleasure in what you're doing. And the Lord took him. Yeah. Thou fool. This night thy soul shall be required of thee. Then whose shall those things be which thou hast provided? So is he that layeth up treasure for himself and is not rich toward God. Being rich toward God is more, you know, treasures in heaven. What a well, what did Jesus say about treasures in heaven? Oh, yeah, let's find out. In Matthew chapter 6 and verse 19 and 20, Jesus said, Lay not up for yourselves treasures upon earth, where moth, moth, yeah, if you had warm wool clothing, moths will get into the closet and lay eggs and they will eat your wool sweaters no problem they will have a nice dinner next thing you know all your clothes have got holes in them where moth and rust doth corrupt yeah you got items made out of steel they'll rust 
Silver will uh, rust too, in a way. So lay not up for yourselves treasures upon earth where moth and rust doth corrupt and where thieves break through and steal. Yeah, thieves. Oh yeah, look at that. I got all this gold and silver and I got food and clothing and everything I could possibly need. And then one day you come home and it's all gone. Verse 20. But lay up for yourselves treasures in heaven where neither moth nor rust corrupt, and where thieves do not break through nor steal. Treasures in heaven. Let's go back to Luke 12, 20. But God said unto him, Thou fool, this night thy soul shall be required of thee. Then whose shall those things be which thou hast provided? So is he that layeth up treasure for himself and is not rich toward God. This rich man could have helped the poor. But, nope. No, I'm going to build a bigger barn. Why should I do anything for anybody else? And he said unto his disciples, Wherefore, Therefore I say unto you, Take no thought for your life, what ye shall eat, neither for the body, what ye shall put on. This life is more than meat, and the body is more than raiment. Raiment is clothing, people. Consider the ravens, for they neither sow nor reap, which neither have storehouse nor barn, and God feedeth them. How much more are ye better than the fowls? And which of you, with taking thought, can add to his stature one cubit? Can you think yourself to be taller? If ye then be not able to do that thing which is least, why take ye thought for the rest? Consider the lilies, how they grow. They toil not. Lilies don't work, do they? They spin not. You know, they don't make themselves clothes. And yet I say unto you that Solomon in all his glory was not arrayed like one of these. If then God so clothed the grass which is today in the field, and tomorrow is cast into the oven. How much more will he clothe you, O ye of little faith? And seek not ye what ye shall eat, and what ye shall drink, neither be ye of doubtful mind. For all these things do the nations of the world seek after, and your Father knoweth that ye have need of these things. But rather seek ye the kingdom of God, and all these things will be added unto you. You know, every time I try to have a career, Lord slam that door in my face. Little did I know that that wasn't where he wanted me. And I hope I'm where he wants me now. I really do. But rather seek ye the kingdom of God, and all these things shall be added unto you. Fear not, little flock, little flock, not the whole world. For it is your Father's good pleasure. Oh, that's what the that's what this whole study is about, right? God, Father's good pleasure. Fear not, little flock, for it is your Father's good pleasure to give you the kingdom. Sell that ye have, and give alms. Provide yourselves bags, which wax not old, a treasure in the heavens that faileth not, where no thief approacheth, neither moth corrupteth. You know, <laughs> uh, if there are people in this world that have more money than they could possibly spend. There's people that could buy a $20 million Learjet every month and never run out of money. And you think they would help somebody in the street that hadn't eaten in a week? Somebody that was crippled through no fault of their own? No. Somebody has a million dollars, they want two. When they have two, they want five. When they have five, they want ten. 
When they have 10, they want 20. It's never enough for them. Never. Verse 34, Jesus speaking, For where your treasure is, there will your heart be also. Is your treasures on the earth? Is your heart treasures on the earth or above? Let your loins be girded about and your lights burning. And ye yourselves, like unto men that wait for their Lord, when he will return from the wedding, that when he cometh and knocketh, ah, knocketh, the door, that they may open unto him immediately. When you hear that knock, run to the door, open it immediately. Blessed are those servants whom the Lord, when he cometh, shall find watching. Verily I say to you, that he shall gird himself and make them to sit down to meet, and he will come forth and serve them. Yeah, you want white clothing for the wedding garments, for the marriage supper of the Lamb. And if he shall come in the second watch, or come in the third watch, and find them so, blessed are those servants. And this know, that if the good man of the house had known what hour the thief would come, he would have watched, and not suffered or allowed his house to be broken through. Be ye therefore ready also, for the Son of Man cometh at an hour when ye think not. We are told to watch. You listen to the pre-tribbers, they'll say, oh, well, there's no signs. The, the, the rapture could happen at any second. Woof! Disappear. Boy, I tell you what. If you believe what all the churches believe, your beliefs need to be examined carefully. Seriously. Seriously. Boy. And again, Luke 12, 32, Fear not, little flock, for it is your Father's good pleasure to give you the kingdom. All right, let's close this out. Where we started, so shall be the end. Revelation 4, 11. Last book in the Bible. Thou art worthy, O Lord, to receive glory and honor and power, for thou hast created all things, and for thy pleasure they are and were created. All blessings, praise, glory, and honor to God the Father and his only begotten Son, Jesus, who is the Christ, the Lamb of God, slain from the foundation of the world. In Jesus' precious name, Amen.